how to sew a kimono suit jacket. A step-by-step -step tutorial with sewing pattern. One, two, three, four. Hi sewers, welcome to my studio. I'm Sasha, I'm a fashion designer and teacher. And today I have a pattern and tutorial showing you how to make this fab and dramatic draped kimono jacket. If you'd like to sew along, you can get the pattern for this in my Etsy store. I'll pop the link down below. I do have patterns available for both pieces of this suit. So if you love the full look and you'd like to have a go at making the trousers as well, do check out my video from last week and I'll link that in the notes as well. I would say this jacket is a beginners to intermediate project, so I probably wouldn't tackle it as your first garment, but it is a simple style. So you can see we don't have set in sleeves, which does make this a little bit easier. It's very soft, it's very drapey, and the structure's all coming from that collar at the front edge there. This one is a unisex pattern and it comes in three sizes, small, medium and large. And you can see due to the nature of the design, it's very roomy, it's soft, it hangs, it works with the body. So those sizes are very flexible as well. It is fully lined. So if you already have a few garments under your belt, but you've never tackled lining before, I'd say this would be a really great project to start with that. I will be showing you the bagging out method. And although this is a simple style, it's the same process that you'd use on many types of lined garments. And also, in my opinion, it's one of the most fun and satisfying sewing techniques. And it's gonna make you feel like a super sewing pro. So let's get it onto the stand and take a closer look at the jacket so we know where we're headed before we get started. Kimono jacket design details. So I've just put the jacket onto the stand so we can get our head around some of the details before we start sewing. So it's a really soft open shape. It's flexibly sized. It doesn't sit close to the body. It drapes with the fabric and that can be really nice because it brings out the qualities of the fabric that you're working with. So you can see we've got these really nice swooping dolman sleeves designed to sit about three quarters on the arm and they add loads of drama when you have your arms out and also create those lovely draped ripples when you have your arms down. It's fully lined throughout and the structure in this piece is all coming from this tailored shawl collar that we have here. So we just have three main components of this jacket. We've got our front divided into two pieces, our back, which is one unified piece, and then our collar bringing everything together. My inspiration when designing this piece was kind of halfway between that kind of really loose Studio 54 look and those really amazing cocoon jackets that you have in the 1920s. So that's the kind of really relaxed glamour we're going for with this look. So now let's have a think about what materials will be suitable for this piece. Kimono jacket fabric choices. For this project, you'll need three materials. So we have our main fabric, that's the one that's gonna go on the outside of the jacket. We've then got the fabric that we're gonna use for our lining, and then we also need some fusing or interfacing as well. In terms of the fabric that you pick for the outer of the jacket, so that's your main fabric, it's really important that you pick something that has a little bit of drape to it. So if you're not familiar with that term, the easiest way to describe drape in fabric is that it's the opposite to stiffness. So I'm gonna be using this really lovely chartreuse wool. And you can see, although it is a medium weight fabric, it's not something like really light, like a viscose chalice, it still has quite a bit of movement to it. So if you imagine if it's on the body, it will follow the form of the body rather than sitting stiff away from the body. And the reason that we want it to have that drape to it is if you look at the style, it's not a structured piece. So it isn't sitting very tight to the body. It's kind of loose, it's got a lot of movement. So fabrics that would work really well for this are a fine suiting, like the one that I'm using. So something quite soft, not too stiff. Or you could use something which is very drapey. So when I made this for my own collection, I made them up in a bamboo fabric, which is very similar to a medium weight viscose. You can even make it in a 
a satin if you wanted to make it into a bit more of an evening style. Or another option if you want to make more of a summer jacket is it would work with a cotton or with a linen as well, which would be really nice and airy. Fabrics that work very well as lining fabrics are ones that have very little friction to them. So what I mean by that is the function of the lining basically is to stop the coat sticking to your other clothes when you put it on. So it means when you pull on the jacket, it's gonna be like really smooth. It's not gonna get caught up and then cause ruching within the finished design. So they normally always have a smooth finish to them. It can be a satin finish or it can be a matte finish, but it always has that smoothness. Personally, I always like to try and find linings that have a little bit of viscose in them because I think they handle really nicely. They always have that softness, that lack of friction, and they're also very good at regulating heat. So that means it keeps you cool when it's warm and warm when it's cool and they also tend not to retain odour. And then finally when you pick your fusing or interfacing for this project you want to pick one which is non-stretch and I would also recommend that you use a fusing which is woven rather than the papery type interfacing. So you'll probably find that you need to pay a little bit more for woven interfacing, but you normally don't need very much for each project, so it's a good investment. And the difference in quality is really huge. The non-woven type, what you'll find is if you put your garments in the wash, it might start to kind of come away from the fabric. It's not particularly durable. With the woven interfacing, once you iron it onto your fabric, once you add that heat and steam, the bond that it makes is much more permanent. So you'll find that you can put the things that you make into the wash without worrying and it's going to have just much better longevity. Now that you have chosen and gathered your fabrics, you can find the quantities that you need in the pattern instructions. The first thing that we need to do is to give our main fabric and our lining fabric a really good iron before we cut it out. So it's really important that you always iron your fabric before you cut it and before you start sewing. When we sew, we're going to be ironing the fabric as we go along and the heat and the steam from the iron it can sometimes make it shrink a little bit and we want to make sure that's happening before we cut it use plenty of steam and that's going to stop the iron sticking to your fabric as well so I'll leave you to get ironing and then let's meet back on the table to start cutting out our pieces step one assemble sewing pattern First, print out your pattern, being careful to print at 100% scale and check in the scale guide on the first page against your tape measure to be sure. Next, cut each page along the purple boundary lines as needed and stick the tiles together with tape or glue using the tile map in the instructions as a guide. Then cut each pattern piece along your chosen size and you'll have four pieces in total. Front, back, top collar and under collar. Step two. Cut fabric. Make sure to iron your fabric first using plenty of steam at an appropriate heat for your fabric type. Then lay the fabric onto your work surface and fold in half lengthwise with the right sides of the fabric facing, matching up the selvages as closely as possible. Now take your pattern pieces and lay them onto the fabric using the cutting lays in the instructions as a guide and pin into place. The back and collar pieces should be placed on the fold. Then cut the pieces out as close as possible to the edge of the paper and take care to mark all the notches before you unpin. As it's such a simple shape, the notches are really important on this pattern to get the collar to sit just right. The top collar and under collar pieces are very similar, so it's a good idea to mark the reverse of them with a chalk T and a U so you can tell them apart later on. Now take your lining and repeat the cutting process for the front and back pieces. Then finally, take your fusible interfacing and cut out a piece for both the top and under collars. Step three, sew main body seams. Take the main fabric back piece and lay it flat on the table with the right side facing up. Then take the two main fabric front pieces and lay them on top of the back piece so the right sides are facing, with the shoulder and side seams of the front and back pieces matching like this. Bring the edges of the side seams to match as closely as possible and pin into place, aligning the notches as you go. Then match and pin the shoulder seams in the same way. We're now going to sew the seams together with a straight stitch with a length of 2.5, a one centimeter seam allowance and a back stitch at the beginning and the end. Repeat this process for all four seams. Then iron the seams flat before pressing them open. 
Use plenty of steam and pressure and a sleeve board can be really useful to help you get the best finish. We're now going to repeat this process for our lining, matching the front and back lining pieces up at the shoulder and side seams with the right sides facing together. Be careful to match the seams precisely and pin all four seams into place at the same time. This time when we sew, we're going to leave a small gap in the stitching in the middle of the left hand side seam here. The gap should be about two inches long and it's best to mark the beginning and the end of the gap with chalk before you start sewing. Now sew the side seams together with a straight stitch with a length of 2.5, a one centimetre seam allowance and a back stitch at the beginning and the end. When you get to the chalk mark guides for the stitching gap, make a back stitch, then stop sewing and pull the fabric through the machine to the second chalk mark. Then resume sewing, starting with another back stitch and continue to the end of the line as normal. The gap should look like this at the end and we'll use it to bag out the jacket and lining later on. Press the seams flat and then open with your iron as before and try to keep the seam allowance even at the gap like this. This will help us get a neat finish when we close up the gap later on. Step four, sew collar. First, place your top and under collars on the table with the wrong sides facing up. Then mark the front side of the under collar with a small letter U in chalk to help us identify it later on. Now take your interfacing pieces and lay them onto each collar piece so the side with the glue is facing down towards the wrong side of the fabric. You'll find the top collar piece is slightly larger than the under collar. Fuse the fabric and the interfacing together with your iron, using a pressing cloth to prevent any glue getting onto the surface of the iron. Then trim away any excess interfacing from the fabric edges. Lay the top and under collars together with the right sides of the fabric facing. Then match and pin them together along the outer curved edge, using plenty of pins and matching any notches as you go. Then sew together with a straight stitch with a length of 2.5, a one centimetre seam allowance and a back stitch at the beginning and the end. Now with the shorter under collar piece facing up and the seam allowance to the right, open out the pieces and bring the under collar side over to the right to sit on top of the seam allowance. We're now going to sew another line of straight stitch to fix the under collar down into place to the seam allowance, close to the edge of the join in the fabric. The stitching should lie just a millimetre or two away from the join between the two collar pieces and to get the best finish you need to pull the two pieces away from each other as you sew. Making sure the stitching is going through both the under collar and the seam allowance. Take your time here to get a neat finish and use a back stitch at the beginning and end of the line. The finished result should look like this from the front and like this from the back with the seam allowance now held into place against the under collar. Then trim down the seam allowance close to the two lines of stitching, being careful not to catch the main collar fabric with your scissors. We're now going to press the outer edge of the collar into shape, creating a small lip of a millimetre or two with the top collar. This is why the top collar piece is slightly larger and it will mean that we won't see the under collar from the outside of the finished jacket, creating a really neat and professional finish. Use plenty of steam and pressure and protect the collar with a pressing cloth if needed. And the finished result should look like this. The two raw edges at the inside edge of the collar should now match and we're going to stitch them together to seal the piece. Use a big straight stitch for this with a length of four, a five millimetre seam allowance and a back stitch at the beginning and the end. Then press the whole collar nice and flat with your iron, being careful not to overstretch it. Step five, attach collar. Place the main body of the jacket onto the table with the right side facing out and the front pieces of the jacket facing up. Then take the collar with the top collar side facing up and match and pin the raw edge to the right side of the jacket neckline, starting at the notch marked for the collar on the pattern. The under collar should now be facing towards the right side of the body pieces. Match the edges of the fabric as closely as possible and align the notches as you go, taking the collar piece right around the back neck and down to the other front piece. Then sew into place using a big straight stitch with a length of four, a five millimetre seam allowance and a back stitch at the beginning and the end. The finished result should look like this, with the under collar side facing down towards the outside of the main body pieces. Step six, attach lining. 
Lay the main body piece onto the table with the right side facing out. Then take the lining with the wrong side facing out and open it to match one of the front edges of the main body. So the right sides are facing together. Start by matching the side seams exactly and pinning into place. Then work all the way around the front edge of the jacket, matching the edges of the lining and the main fabric and aligning the notches as you go. Keep pinning and matching the whole way round in a loop until you reach back to the side seam where you started. It should now look like this with the wrong side of the lining facing outwards and the main body of the jacket pinned inside of it with the collar hidden between the layers. Then sew the seam together with a straight stitch with a length of 2.5, a 1cm seam allowance and a back stitch at the beginning and the end. Keep sewing the whole way round in one continuous loop until you meet back at the point where you started, overlapping the stitches slightly to create a secure finish. Step 7. Bag outlining. So your jacket should now look like this. You've just joined it together along that front edge and we're ready for the super fun bit, which is we're going to turn it the right way around. So the easiest way to do that is we're going to turn our jacket over so you've got the back facing up towards you. You're then going to go in through one of the sleeves and you're putting your arm between the lining and the outer, grabbing the outer from the other side and then we're just going to pull it all through one of the sleeves until we can reveal. We've got it the right way round now with the lining on the inside. So then the last thing that we're going to do before we give it a press is we're going to seal up our lining where we've got those raw edges at the sleeves. This is called bagging out this whole process of putting in a lining in this way. If this is your first time of doing this method, then pay really close attention to the next bit that I'm going to show you because it can be quite hard to get your head around it. But what I will say is once you've done it, it's one of those things in sewing which is literal magic. And although I've done this like a zillion times, I still really enjoy it every time I do it. Pay close attention. I'm going to bring over the stand so it's going to be a little bit easier to explain what's going on. Step eight, seal sleeves. So I've positioned the jacket onto the stand now, more or less how it will be when we wear it. You can see the lining isn't sitting quite right yet, but don't worry about that. That's all going to be sorted when we come and do the final press. But what we're going to do is just make sure that we've got the seams of the outer and the lining matched up at this point. Importantly, we're going to start with our left sleeve because that's where we made that little opening in the lining that we're going to use later on. So I'm just making sure that we're lined up along the shoulder there and that we're lined up along this underarm seam. And once we are lined up, I'm just going to put a pin in to hold that into place. So now I'm going to turn my mannequin around to show you the next bit a little bit more easily. So that pin that I've just put in is in the left hand sleeve here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come through from the right hand side and I'm going to grab hold of that pin but from the inside of the jacket. So I'm going to just slide my hand now in between the lining and the outer. So I'm going all the way through to the other side until I can get hold of where I've put that pin and then we'll have to come off the sand for the next bit. I'm just going to pull that through so I've now got that pin and that part of the jacket inside out in my hand. Don't worry what's happening with the rest of the jacket now. This part with the pin is the only bit we need to think about for the moment. With the matched and pinned seam in front of you, very carefully flip the two pieces of fabric around so the right sides of the lining and main fabric are facing each other. Then match up the seam again and pin into place. Now match the edges of the armhole together, working around the opening in a loop aligning the notches and seams and pinning into place as you go, until you reach back at the point where you started. Then sew together with a straight stitch with a length of 2.5 and a 1cm seam allowance. Keep sewing until you reach back at the underarm seam where you started and end with the back stitch. Snip into the seam allowance at the underarm seam to create a small V-shaped opening, being careful to cut close but not through the stitches. This will help the cloth sit nicely later on. 
To sew the second cuff, reach inside the jacket through the small hole we made in the lining earlier. Grab hold of the matched and pinned underarm seam and pull it out through the opening in the lining. Pull enough fabric through so you can see the edges of the cuff clearly and then repeat the same process we did on the other side. Carefully flipping the pieces so the right sides are facing, matching the seams together again and then pinning into place. As before, follow this by pinning the whole way around the open edge of the armhole, aligning the notches and seams as you go before sewing the seam together. Then shake the jacket out to flip everything back around to the right way and it should now look like this. Step nine, close lining. The last bit of stitching is to seal up the small opening in the lining. Bring the folded edges of the opening to me and pin closed with a pin at the top and the bottom of the opening and one in the middle. Then sew a line of straight stitching a millimetre or two away from the edge with a back stitch at the beginning and the end. Start your stitching just above the opening and end it just below for a neat and secure finish. And the finished result should look like this. Step 10, final press. To get the jacket to sit nicely and drape well, the last thing we need to do is to press the lining into the jacket at the front edges and the cuff. The aim is to set the lining away from the main body fabric at the join and to press into place, leaving a lip of a couple of millimeters of the main body fabric at the edge. We want the stitch line at the join to be pulled out as far as possible to the edge, rather than sinking into the coat to create a crisp silhouette. The best way to do this is to roll the edge of the seam between your thumb and forefinger to work the seam out to the edge. And you can also insert a pin into the join to help pull the seam outward as you go. And this is what we want it to look like from the inside. With the small lip of main body fabric, meaning none of the lining is visible from the outside of the jacket. Use your iron to fix the edge into place with plenty of steam and pressure and try to keep the lip of main body fabric even as you work around the piece. When you get to the collar, pull it away from the join and try to get the main body fabric and the lining to lay really flat either side of it. And don't forget to press the sleeve hems too. So we're nearly there. I've just got the jacket onto the stand now to show you the final part of the pressing process. What I would say when you're giving this jacket the final press at the end is take your time with it. Because it is such a soft drape style, just spending a little bit of extra time, just making sure you've got the edges really crisp is what's gonna give it that really nice contrast between the drape and the kind of tailored look of the collar. So we've just pressed all our hems. So that's anywhere that the lining and the outer of the jacket meet. So that's around the bottom of the sleeves there and around the bottom of the jacket. The last thing we need to do is just give a final press to the front edge of the collar. If we look at the collar at the moment, you'll see it's rolling back slightly and we can see a little bit of the lining down that front edge, which we don't want. So what we're going to do is we're just going to iron our collar into place securely at the front there. And that's just gonna stop that rolling and give you a really neat edge down the front. So bringing the jacket a little bit closer, we're only going to be ironing this bottom section of the collar here. So we want to go from the base of the collar to eight inches up. We're then going to iron from the inside. And just like we did at the hem, we want to leave that lip. So we want to have the lining not right on the edge. We want to leave a little bit of overhang so we can't see it from the outside. And this time we want that overhang here to be about four millimeters. So four millimeters overhang, eight inches up from the base of the collar. And here's what that process looks like up close. Measuring eight inches up from the start of the collar, then pressing the area flat, leaving a lip of collar fabric about four millimeters deep. Notice that I'm using slightly less pressure with the iron for this, but still plenty of steam and then give that same area at the bottom of the collar another press from the front to really shape it down into place. You might need to use a pressing cloth here to prevent shine depending on your fabric. You can see the difference now that's made to that front edge. So you can see we've got that super nice crisp line at the front, contrasting with that really soft drape. 
I always like to get it on the stand and have just a very final check. You can also get your iron, just give it a last little press if it needs it. And we're done. If you're sewing along at home, I hope you now have an amazing new jacket and you're feeling super proud of yourself. Please make sure to hit like if you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to go ahead and make the full suit, I will link to the trouser pattern in the notes below. I've got loads more patterns and tutorials and fashion and sewing content coming for you over the next few weeks. So do make sure to subscribe to my brand new channel if you'd like to see more. And I would love to see how your jackets turn out. So if you are sharing any pictures online, please do make sure to tag me. You can find me on Instagram and TikTok at Sasha underscore underscore Starlight. And you can use the hashtag Starlight Kimono Jacket for this project. But for now, I hope your new jacket brings you all the joy for many years to come. And I'll see you next time.